Commander decks these days can be really pricey, so I wanted to make the best $25 budget deck to show you. But then I started thinking about who else could make some good budget decks? And that's how I ended up challenging 10 creators to make the most powerful EDH deck they could for $25. For the most part, everyone had the freedom to make whatever they wanted, with a few exceptions. No commanders in the EDH rec top 100, and they could use any method to determine the $25 price, but the commander plus basic lands would be included in the cost. So if you already have basic lands, these lists are probably going to be even cheaper for you. Links to everyone's channel and deck list in the description. And if you want to buy any of these decks, you should use whatever seller is best for you. But I would like to recommend Cool Stuff Inc. If you use my code, you can get 5% off your order, making these budget decks even cheaper. Plus, it supports the channel. Thank you very much to Cool Stuff Inc. for sponsoring the video. While I was fishing for people to collab for this video, I snagged a couple of goldfish. I'll start with Phil, aka Brewer's Kitchen, who sent in a very bold list, spending $8 of his $25 budget on the commander. Itali Primal Conqueror, red red 5 for a 7-7 Elder Dinosaur with Trample. When Itali enters, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. You may cast any number of spells from among the non-land cards without paying their mana cost. You can also pay 9 in a Phyrexian green mana to transform Atali at sorcery speed. The flip side is an 11-11 trample indestructible Phyrexian elder dinosaur that has essentially infect without the keyword infect. This deck is relatively simple. Big green red dudes, the commander being the most obvious one, but we have the other Atali, Azuri's Predation, Dragon Lair Spider, all of these are powerful cards. We also have plenty of ways to fling our commander for big damage or sacrifice it for value to recast Atali and get that amazing enter the battlefield effect again. Stealing your opponent's spells is great in a budget deck since you can make use of their non-budget threats. If you want to play some big gruel stuff on a budget, this list is excellent. Next is Budget Commander, aka Tomer. He made a Sergeant John Benton deck. Johnny over here is a green-white 1-2-4 human soldier with trample and haste. Whenever Sergeant John Benton deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each draw that many cards. This deck is also relatively simple. Turn 1 ramp. Turn 2 John, hit an opponent for 2, draw 2 cards. And then turn 3, you are go, go, go. This deck is full of ways to buff up your commander and ways to protect him. You buff up the commander, deal damage to a player, and when they try to kill your Voltron threat, just use the protection spells to save him. And then once you've hit that player for their insolence, you'll get to draw even more cards to buff up your commander even more and protect your commander over and over again. I really like the addition of Summer Bloom here, which will easily be essentially a ritual in this deck. Also, I think this is a deck you can pick up and upgrade with some more powerful auras and protection spells to make this commander even faster and more dangerous. This commander is a Voltron deck with a slight politics spin. You never know who might be willing to take 6 damage just to draw some sweet, sweet cards. On to the deck from Geek and Seek, who if you don't know is one of the editors for Goldfish, and he has his own channel. Morgan brought a Rebecca Silas Ren deck. Rebecca, Architect of Ascension, is 3 and a white for a 3 4 human artificer. Artifacts you control have protection from each converted mana cost among artifacts you control. And this is partnered with Silas Wren. Black Blue 1 for a 2 2 human with Death Touch. When Silas Wren deals damage to a player, choose target artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast the card this turn. This deck has Sword of the Meek plus Thopter Foundry, which is one of my favorite value engines of all time. And in tandem with Urza Lord High Artificer, who I'm surprised he was able to fit within the budget, you can just go infinite. This deck has a lot of creature cantrips, and the artifact ones can be used to easily chump block and then recur them with Silas to churn through the deck and dig for that combo. I think this commander pair is really powerful. I think a lot of people don't realize how strong giving Silas Ren protection from things can be, letting him chip in for damage and get tons of value from recurring artifacts. This deck is a great starting point for any aspiring artificer. The next list is from Rebel, who made a Kedis Malcolm deck. Kedis is a cute little lizard for red and one. He's a 1-1 with partner and whenever a commander you control deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to each other opponent. Malcolm Keenine Navigator is 2 and a blue for a 2-2 Siren Pirate, with flying and 
Whenever one or more pirates you control deals damage to your opponents, create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage. Meaning this deck lets you go turn 2 Kedis into turn 3 Malcolm, into turn 4 hit someone who doesn't have a flyer, and make 3 treasures, since Kedis will have Malcolm's damage also hit your other 2 opponents. This ramps you into 7 mana on turn 4. And what do we do with all these treasures? Play massive threats super early. Bane of Malaged or Itali can be really scary early game. Beyond that, we have a pirate sub theme to continually get treasures. Also, there is a backup combo. We got Niv Mizzet plus Tandem Lookout or Curiosity. And Curiosity plus Tandem Lookout are also just phenomenal with Malcolm. This deck has an excellent curve and straightforward game plan, which makes it a very effective budget deck. It kind of does a little bit of everything. The next deck is from Commander Mechanic. This is a Gev Aristocrats combo deck. Gev is black red for a 3 2 with Ward pay to life. Other creatures you control enter with an additional plus one plus one counter on them for each opponent who lost life this turn. Whenever you cast a lizard spell, Gev deals one damage to target opponent. That last line of text is basically not relevant for the stack. Instead, using that first ability, if you have a creature with Persist, giving them the ability to enter with a plus one plus one counter cancels out the minus one minus one counter that they would come with. So as long as you have dealt damage to one opponent, you can infinitely use any sack outlet on a persist creature. And if that sack outlet does damage, like a goblin bombardment, that will just win the game. Fast, efficient combos like this can be a great way to win on a budget. You can also use stuff like First Day of Class as a backup for Gev if needed. The deck has other fun things like Rite of Flames, which lets you hit each opponent, letting you put three counters onto creatures that come into play, turning some of these dinky persist creatures into reasonable mid-range threats if you can't get that combo off. Gev is very cool. I love lizards, and using him as a combo piece is pretty neat. Give this list a try if you want to play some combo. On to a deck from Arcosa, who put together an Anim Pakal aggro deck. Anim Pakal Thousandth Moon is red-white one for a 1-2 human soldier. Whenever you attack with one or more non-gnome creatures, put a plus one plus one counter on Anim. Then create X-1-1 colorless artifact gnome creature tokens that are tapped and attacking, where X is the number of 1-1 counters on Anim. So this commander goes tall and wide at the same time. And if you've never seen anyone play this deck, the commander can get out of hand really fast, letting you crash in for huge Voltron damage and go wide to get past blockers. I love the addition of Loshiel Clockwork Scholar as a card draw engine here. Plus the new Arabella Abandoned Doll is a really sweet way to make use of those 1-1 gnomes. Also, Requisition Raid, really underrated spree card that I think people are overlooking. Aggro can be a really tricky archetype in EDH, but sometimes a more expensive, greedier deck can get caught off guard by how fast your aggro deck can be. If you want Boros Punch Face, check this list out. Also check out his channel, really underrated video essays there. We're about halfway into these now, so if you'll excuse me, I need to fulfill a contractual obligation. Hmm... I think I want this card, Ugh, but I can't remember if I pulled one from a pack last week. Ugh, I wish I could just pop back to my place and see if I have one. Your wish is my command. Boop! Ah, oof. Oh, here's the card I was looking for. My wish has been granted, but in a cruel twist of fate, I have fallen and injured my leg and cannot return to the game store. Plus, I wasted one of my wishes. Did you know 1 in 10 game store employees are actually genies? Don't look that up. And a simple wish like this could easily cause you a lot of trouble. This is why I use Card Castle, the easy way to track your collection online and know what you do and don't have anywhere you are. Check the link in the description to sign up for free and avoid getting caught off guard by genies at your local game store. Let's talk about this Edric list from Dana of the EDH Rec cast. Edric, Spymaster of Trust, is blue-green 1 for a 2-2 Elf Rogue. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may draw a card. If you've never played against Edric, it is a tremendously powerful card and was a CDH deck for a while. This might seem like a group hug deck, but it is actually jam-packed with 1 mana flying unblockable dudes, letting you get the most value out of this commander. This lets you draw a ton of cards since if you hit with 5 flyers you'll draw 5 cards. 
And once you have all of those cards, you can chain extra turn spells to keep going through your deck. And then finally, using anthems like Scale Up, for example, you can turn those 1-1 one -one flyers or unblockable dudes into real threats. Honestly, I'm surprised how many extra turn effects he was able to fit into this budget deck. In terms of raw power, I think this might be the strongest list of the bunch. It's very consistent, has great protection, and not to mention some of the best potential in terms of upgrades. A few more extra turn spells and some better anthems could easily turn this deck into the most dangerous list in your pod. Now, let's talk about the Magic Mirror Boys. Salubrious so Snail submitted an Elevir of the Wild Court deck. This commander is green-white 2 for a 4-4 human knight. Whenever Elevir enters or attacks, create a virtuous roll token attached to another target creature you control. A virtuous roll, by the way, gives the enchanted creature plus one plus one for each enchantment you control. Whenever an enchanted creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. This commander reads way worse than it plays. I've seen some CDH lists for this deck pop up and they are strong. And this list is somewhat reminiscent of those CDH decks. We have a multitude of hate bears to slow down faster decks while doing a lot of damage with these buffed up creatures. Those roll tokens really start to add up. The Umber cards can also protect your creatures while buffing up the power of your team even further. I'm a big fan of Strength of the Harvest here, an often overlooked MDFC that is absolutely perfect in this list. I think people will be surprised how quickly this budget deck can overpower the table and how much damage it can actually dish out. Elk submitted a commander I've never actually seen in a table in front of me. Catilda Dawnheart Prime. Green and white for a human warlock 1-1. Protection from werewolves, probably not relevant, but more importantly, human creatures you control have tap, add one mana of this creature's colors. So it turns all of your humans, including itself, into mana dorks. Then you can pay four green white, tap, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. If you know Elk, you know that Cryptolith right effects are right up their alley. And this commander is that, but for humans. This is a human deck where you want to play dudes, tap those dudes for mana to play more dudes. There are a ton of fun synergy cards here. Wily Duke draws a card and gains you life when he becomes tapped, so turning him into a mana dork is a card draw engine. To arms, oh, excuse me, there's an exclamation mark there. To arms can easily be a ritual plus cantrip in this deck. One of the best things about Catilda is that last ability lets you pump your team every turn, making these small humans into real threats even if you don't draw into any of your other buffing spells. This deck has a lot of cute synergy cards, and a surprising amount of resilience. If you were looking for a typal deck but were scared off by some of the expensive staples, I think this is an excellent starting point. Last is me, and I cheated by making two decks for this video. The first one I made was with the help of you, or some of you. This deck was made during a live stream, and I wanted to thank everyone who tuned in and suggested cards for the deck. If you want to catch live streams, you can hit the bell here on YouTube or follow me on Twitch. I'll put a link in the description. This deck is a Jalira Master Polymorphist deck. Three and a blue for a 2-2 human wizard. Pay blue and one, tap, sacrifice another creature. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. The idea is to play something that makes a little dude, cast the commander, and sacrifice the dude to spin into a big monster. And even on a budget, we have some great monsters. Sphinx of the Second Sun is crazy value, and Stormtide Leviathan can easily turn the tables against a massive board. The rest of the deck is blue control. We have lots of ways to counter spells or bounce creatures, which also make fodder for polymorphing. And if the polymorph plan goes awry, then cards like High Tide can help us ramp into big threats. This deck is a mix of mono blue control and blue stompy, and I think it can put in some real work at almost any pod. After that livestream, I decided to make another deck by myself, and I made Tibor and Lumia. Blue red 2 for a 3-3 human wizard. When you cast a blue spell, target creature gains flying until end of turn. When you cast a red spell, Tibor and Lumia deal 1 damage to each creature without flying. The goal of this deck is to give death touch to the commander. Once you've done that, any blue and red spell is essentially a board wipe, because you can stack the triggers however you want. The commander will give itself flying and deal one damage to everything else that isn't flying, and one death touch damage to the whole board 
will clear it. And this lets you turn any blue red instant into an instant speed board wipe. Then the deck uses flyers to make those board wipes one decided and crunch in at your opponents while you keep the board clear. Late game these spells that buff up things based on instants and sorceries can quickly close out games in a deck like this. And even without the commander you can just play a decent is it control game plan by itself. So those were all of the decks I had to show you today. I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who submitted decks. I think they all did a great job. $25 is a pretty tight budget, and I'm really impressed with how much power people were able to get out of these. Let me know your favorites in the comments below, and if you're going to try any of these out. Extra special thanks to all of my patrons. If you want to support me, check out the Patreon. You can get lots of perks, including being in the credits like my tier 3 patrons.